guys in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make a real-time basic application using feathers JS and react so right now I'm going to show you the finished product that we're going to be making this is just a little simple website right here using react and it's using sockets and then right here I have postman opened up and I noticed I have my local host there's a feathers uh, server that I have running and I just have a service up tacos and we're going to make a post request to it i'm going to watch as our uh, application updates live without us refreshing the page or anything so i'm just going to send it um, it looks like our server responded okay and you notice that it's updated over here automatically now let's say uh i only want one and you can see it pops up over here as well so i can just change the values however i want um, and i can just keep updating this and you'll notice it'll update putting in my new uh, items like that, throwing it in. So it's super cool. Let's get into how this is done. So open up a terminal um, window, um, and then first just make a folder called, uh, I'm gonna call mine backend, you can call it whatever you like. Go into that, and then we're gonna be using the feathers um, command line uh, tools. So if you do feathers generate, that will, uh, in the backend folder, this will go ahead and bring us a prompt. We can set up our uh, project. We'll just hit enter to everything. All the default settings are good. Um, it automatically comes with sockets, which we want. That's very cool. Um, if you're not familiar with this, what this Feathers uh, command line application is, I'll post something in the description below. It just lets you set up a Feathers app really super easy. Okay, so this is almost done making, and when this is done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a service, um, creating tacos, um, and that's it. That's all you need to do for the back end, and it's already comes built in to use sockets automatically, um, and you're all set up just like that. It's really nice using sockets with feathers as you're about to see. Okay, so it looks like we're just about finished downloading. It looks like this is the last one, and we can exit out of this little window and we'll just do feathers generate service. Alright, um, I'm going to call this taco. Um, we want to use the database. We'll just use the me DB. No authentication needed. And our service is good. Okay, so this is pretty much done right now. Um, the back end is all good, it's um, finished. Now let's just work on the front end React code that we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna move back up, and then I want you guys to clone um, a this repository. Um, this is just a basic React template that I set up. Um, it just has um, Saga, React, Redux, um, React Router, all that stuff set up and um, already done. So it'll be very easy, we just uh, add the sockets to it. So go ahead and clone this. I already have this clone, so I will not um, run that. But I'll put a link to below of what to clone. And once you have that cloned, um, just CD into it. Um, then do npm install. I already have this done, install already. But if uh, your first time, make sure to do that. And then do npm install save socket io slash client. Um, this is a client socket io library that we'll be using. So make sure to run that as well. And if you just look inside of this, it is a basic React application. Um, you can see I already set up some actions, some stores, and this is just dummy um, code that's ready to be filled out by us right now. So the first thing I want to do is initialize the um, Feathers application, which I like to do in the store. Um, so the first thing, and we won't be using Saga for this, but I'm just going to leave it in for now. Um, the first thing we're going to just import um, is feathers. So import feathers from feather client. And then we're also going to import IO from socket.io client. And then down here, you can put this just about anywhere. I'm going to put it below my store. 
I'm just going to initialize uh, some stuff. So first, I'm going to put the host, which is going to be localhost. And this is um, the port and the URL that your server is going to be set up at. So by default, uh, feathers goes to this one. So I'm going to set it to this one. But if yours feathers is going somewhere else, make sure to put that there. And then I'm going to create a socket. I'm just going to do IO. Um, I believe it's dot. Nope, just host. Just like that. And then we're going to export const app and create our feathers. So dot configure feathers dot socket io passing in socket and then dot configure feathers dot hooks okay so that initializes the feathers application gets it set up with sockets and points it at the server that we're going to be needing okay very good so next we're going to go into our components and actually start listening for socket change for changes in the server. So this is going to be in our components main folder. It's going to come down here and create a new function. So we're going to create a function called component did mount. So this is a function that React calls for you, and this is um, did did the component mount. That that's exactly like if it if it is loaded onto the page, then it will call this function, and it only calls it once, which is important because we only want to do this once. Um, so we're just gonna get that app that we initialized in our store, and we're just going to create um, our service. So oops, not app tacos taco service app.service um, tacos and then from our taco service we're just going to create we're going to do on what this says is um, this lets you do sockets so you can say when created when deleted we're going to do when created so every time a new taco is created um, this function is going to be called it's going to pass a taco in um, so every time something is created in the server, it's going to call our function right here. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to update the UI and show that we have a new taco being displayed. So we're just going to create a function um, that's going to, we're going to do an action and then a reducer for it. So this.props.new taco passing in taco. So we have to actually go create this function new taco now in our actions. So save that. We're all done with that. And then we're going to go into actions, action creators. And we're just going to export function. And this is the new taco. Passing in taco as a parameter. And all we're going to do is we're going to return a object. And it'll be new, ta new taco. And then right here we'll pass in the taco. So this is going to be an action that we're going to dispatch to a uh, one of our Redux uh, reducers, and it'll add this to the um, state of our application. So every time a new taco is created on the um, Feather server, it'll call our function right here, passing the taco in. And what we'd like to do is update our state. So we're going to go into our reducers, and we're going to create a taco reducer. OK, so we're just going to say function taco call it tacos and it's going to take a state at first we have no tacos just an empty array and an action um, before I forget let's just export default tacos and then we're going to do a switch statement um, we're going to do action dot type and then case number one it is new taco um, if it is, what we'd like to return is our a new array with um, all the elements in the old state, adding on our new taco that we just got. So just like that. So we're creating a new array, we're adding all the elements from our old state, and then we're adding the taco. 
Um, and then we need to set a default state, which we just return state. Okay, so now we just need to add this to our root reducer. So that's index. So we're in reducer slash index, and we're just going to import um, taco tacos from tacos. Now I just want to double check and make sure I named it taco um, juicers. And I call it taco, not tacos. Okay. Um, and we're just gonna right here do tacos, add that to our reducer. Oops, and this should not be in a string. And all right, awesome. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna call that reducer and it's gonna add tacos to our state. Now we just need to then go to our components app. We're gonna add that state to the props. So we're gonna say tacos is equal to state dot tacos, just like that. So awesome, now if we were to make a post, it will add our tacos to the state. Now we just wanna show it on the screen. So we're just gonna to go to components and then home. And then right here, we'll create a div. And we'll say this dot props dot tacos dot map. And the first parameter is the taco. Second is the position. Um, and we'll just create a paragraph tag. Um, key makes uh, unique. So uh, this is for React's purpose. So it loads faster and knows which ones to reload. Um, and in the middle here, we're just going to do json.stringify because the taco is a, J a JSON object. Um, and we're just going to close that p tag. Awesome. And just like that, we are done. So I'm just going to save that and give this thing a run. Uh, I'm just going to close my other two tabs real quick that we're running the server before to launch this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna do npm start in my uh, front end. I'm gonna create a new tab and we're gonna go, oops, come back over here. Go back to our back end, do npm start. So I have the feather server running and I have the um, react server running. As you can see, oh, and looks like, do we have a syntax error we can fix real quick? Let's see, feathers uh, ran okay. And oh, I just did a semicolon on accident. So if you go into source, components, app, get rid of the semicolon. This is a JSON object, those should not be there. So start that up again. And does it look like we're running good? We're loading. Once this thing is loading, we'll try making a post, adding this to our Feather server and see if it updates live here. Let's see, we're just starting up still. Failed to compile. Module not found. Feather's client, okay? So I just forgot to install uh, one package. So install, save, Feather's client is needed as well. And we'll let this finish installing, and then I will start up the server again. And notice React's um, message error messages are very nice and clear. They tell you exactly what is wrong, so you can go and fix them. It's really nice. I knew exactly which uh, module I need to now load and add to that. Okay, so. We're just going to try to start up the server again, see if I was missing anything else. Um, this one looks like it's loading a little bit faster. Maybe we uh, are all clear of syntax errors. And there we go. Okay, it popped up. 
All right, so at first we don't see anything. That's what we would expect. We have not posted anything yet. So we'll just add, let's start posting something. So uh, I, I use Postman. We can use curl or some other things. We're just going to post to our um, server. Um, mine's at localhost 3030. So I'm going to send. And we sent. It responded OK. And very nice. We see it pop up over here. No refresh of the page. We just see it pop up. If I send it again, send again, send again, just keep sending. And then we notice it's updating real time and looks really nice. Um, so you notice the IDs are different on each one of these guys. You can change this again to a different word if you want to. And you can see they're posting. Now, this is just a dummy application to get show you the concept and uh, the power of sockets and how cool they can be. As you can see, the page just changes without reloading, which is really awesome. Um, this is a little teaser. I'm going to be making a uh, larger application using sockets in uh, the future and future videos coming up real soon. So if you want to see how to build a big application using sockets, uh, do subscribe and watch for that video.